Rule number one, BIOS is always right. Rule number two, nothing else matters because BIOS is always right. Alrighty, welcome guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is BIOS and today we are going to be reacting to the PlayStation 5 Pro announcement. I haven't seen much of it. There's been like some discourse online about like the price and stuff like that, but I want to see for myself to see what the hubbub is about. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. All right, let's get started. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro, and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay, with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU, which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. Right. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run 60 frames per second. Mainly by reducing the graphical detail Fidelian until those frame okay. rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on a mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrow- I always play on performance. I like never play on fidelity. Like, I, I don't see the point. It just looks so bad. Like, it looks laggy. Knowing that divide is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR AI. for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. 
It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second. And of course, it's going to look choppier. Of course, it's going to look better. Of this course. goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see fidelity that PS5 again. Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. It is? Where? Oh, okay, I guess the grass is a little sharper. Oh, and the... The, the hideout has the screen. You can see it. You can barely make out the sign, though. Okay. Okay, okay. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. Wait, this doesn't even look different. In fact, wait, oh, wait, okay. The blurriness is gone. But it's still like not that clear. And this is just background. Like this is just for for like effect. I don't really I don't really see much of a difference. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene. No, it's not. No, it is not. Wait, let me see the no, the cars. Yeah, less, a little less blurry, but it's not different. That's not different at all. Including the trees and procedural cars. No. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. Um, PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics. I wouldn't say remarkable. Responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The he says boost frame rate, but it's like it's still 60 FPS. Like you're not even hitting 100. Like I know some games can hit 120 and stuff like that, but they don't stay there. Like it'll be one thing if the PS5 is like consistently hitting above 60. If it's consistently hitting above 60, and maintains 100 to 120 much better than okay, I guess, like, okay. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects, as well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Oh. Open up, guys. Jorah's orders. Good enough for me. I can't wait for comparisons. Broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference, allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run through of the technology. That does not look 60. Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. You'll never win. Any new games, though?
That is not 60. There is 60. How much is it? Play has no limit, but my wallet does. Six ninety nine. Vertical stands sold separately. Six ninety nine. What? That's wow. Available November seventh. You don't even get the stand, and you get the same controller as the PS Five. You don't even get the new uh, Pro controller. Wow, that is a ripoff. I'm not even going to front. And you're barely getting any upgrades? Man, what? Hold on, let me look up the specs. So you're getting Wi-Fi 7 and a 2 terabyte SSD. Which most people already upgraded their SSDs. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. No new games. No new games to show off, like, some actual power from the hardware. No controller. No stand. No disk drive. I've heard that this thing is modular. How much is the disk drive? It'll cost you $79.99? $80? The vertical stand will set you back 30? That is absolutely disgusting. Mm -mm. Wow. Wow, PlayStation. Wow, gaming industry. Wow. I mean, mm. What do you guys think? Are you guys going to get the PlayStation 5 Pro? Honestly, I wouldn't. This is not an upgrade. This is not worth it. The PlayStation 5 is still perfectly fine. And the difference is so minuscule. If you're going to be paying $6.99 for a console, you might as well put that money towards a PC. Luckily, I did this early and got a PC. So, you know, when once you do that, once you do that switch, like the graphical the graphical limit is through the roof, like the ceiling is so much higher. So I have I have a PC, Nintendo Switch Pro, I'm mean, Nintendo Switch OLED, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5. I have I have all all of them. And honestly, since getting a PC, I barely touch my PlayStation 5 anymore. I'm literally just holding out for Monster Hunter at this point. But I was kind of looking in, looking forward to the Pro because the, play, the PlayStation 4 Pro was my favorite console. And this? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Any other info? Nothing. Play has no limit, but my wallet does. <laughs> and Jazzy Gums, bro, is so funny. Dudes, oh my god. Let me know down in the comments. Are you guys going to get this or what? Because this is crazy. Mm. I'll see you guys in the next one.